my tips. Hello and welcome to another Tech by Tips video. In today's video, we're going to be addressing this video request. It's been in the queue for a while, so I want to make sure that I cover this. And it comes from Vincenzo Altieri, and it says, uh, Tech by Tips, what about a good Docker AirPrint server tutorial? So let's cover this really quickly. There's a bunch of solutions to have an AirPrint server available. So I picked one that is a very commonly downloaded and used image in Docker Hub. So we're going to be discussing that. It's uh, This is the GitHub repository for this image. It's a Docker image for cups intended as an AirPrint relay. And it's uh, found in github.com slash chuckcharlie slash cops dash avahi dash airprint and it basically tells us that it's a port from a previous uh, repository but this one I, I one thing that i really liked about this one is that it works for arm architectures and amd64 so if you if you want to use it with raspberry pis you can do that and as well with regular computer processors basically he says that he has the latest version in the repository in docker hub but he also has an ability to use a specific version if you specify that in the tags and you know so you can pick the right architecture and it's based on alpine so it is a very very small docker container that's really good and it basically runs cups uh, which is like an airprint relay for printers that are on the network but they're not capable of air printing he basically says that he forked the original repository because he wanted to use alpine instead of ubuntu and he wanted to be able to work on, uh, on more operating systems so that, that's good and he says we need to configure two volumes so a slash config and a slash services where the slash config is gonna host the persistent printer configurations and the services is going to store the Avahi service files that it's going to generate. And basically says that the variables that need to be added are cups admin and cups password for the credentials that you need to use to log in to the user interface where you manage the application basically. And it says that you need to run this in host network mode for it to work properly because it's needed for multicasting which is something that AirPrint uses. And then he gives us an example here of what the run command is and how a docker compose file is. So we basically are going to be using something similar to this, a little bit modified, but that's basically what we need. So yeah, he says if you go into the IP of the device where you're running the container and then on port 631, that's where you're going to find the administrative user interface. And then you log in using the user and the password that you specify here. So it's pretty straightforward, not a lot here. And he does make a note here though, that when you add a printer into the server, you need to make sure that you check the box that says share this printer. And also that whenever you make changes to the configuration of a printer, you need to give it about a minute and close the browser so that then it, it will uh, write that configuration into a file. So apparently it's something that he noticed. So it's pretty straightforward, easy. So now if we go into the Docker Hub image here, we can see that it's been downloaded over a million times. So that means it's really useful for a lot of people. And that's why I decided to go with this one. And again, it has the same documentation that we saw in the GitHub repository. So everything is good. So now let's go into the NAS and set this up. First thing, we have to create these two folders. So we're gonna be going into our NAS, file station, we're gonna go into Docker, but I'm also gonna go into the projects here. I'm gonna create. I'm gonna create a folder for the Avahi project. I did receive a question in a previous video on people saying, you know, what are projects and stuff like that. If you don't have the projects section in your container manager, it means that you're running an older version of DSM, which is the Synology system. So you should upgrade to 7.2. Right now it's 7.2.2, .2, if I believe. So it's definitely better. It makes it a lot easier for you to configure everything and manage everything. You have the networks and all that. So that is important. All right, so we have the project created and now we go into where I put the container files. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna name this AirPrint. And then inside here, I'm gonna create the two folders, which is uh, services. And the other one is config. Perfect. So now that we have this, 
we can go into container manager and then we can create our project so I'm gonna create a project here I'm gonna name it AirPrint and I'm gonna pick that location where I said I'm gonna create the docker compose files so where did I put that here oh did I name it Avahi I think I did right give me one second yep that shouldn't be Avahi that should be I'm gonna rename it AirPrint there we go so now AirPrint is the proper name that I want for this so let's refresh this and docker projects airprint here we go and I'm gonna create a docker compose file I already have the docker compose file that I am going to use so let me just copy this here and then we're gonna discuss it once we can see it in a bigger screen so next next don't start done and then we wait for airprint to show up in here and here we go we go into the YAML configuration and that's what we're gonna be discussing here so we have and we're going to be defining services and we're going to have a container which is the airprint server and i'm going to name it uh, airprint as the container name but i'm going to be using the chuck charlie image that we discussed we can put here the latest tag and that should be enough to get the latest version and then we have to put the configuration so i'm going to go back into the configs airprint and i'm going to copy this path here because that's what we need to use for the path in the container so let me replace this with config and then here services and this tells us that we're gonna have in the NAS in the container so we're mapping the slash config in the container to this path in the NAS and slash services in the container to this path in the NAS now we need to use host mode so that's why I'm specifying that and here we're specifying the environment variables so my time zone is New York so I'm gonna put time zone equals America New York and then this is the user ID and the group ID for the first administrator account that you create when you set up your NAS if you're using another one then you need to figure out what those are you can SSH into the NAS and then run the command ID and it'll give you that and here I'm specifying that I'm gonna have admin as a username for the website of the configuration and the password is gonna be password and we're gonna restart this container unless we manually stop it ourselves and then here's just a note letting us know that we need to go into the IP of the NAS and then port 631 to access the administrative user interface so we're good now we should be able to save this and build it and when we do that it's gonna pull the image and create a container all that so I'll be back when all of that is done all right it has finished deploying the container and we got a notification here so we can clear this out and now we'll, when we go here in containers we see the AirPrint container is running we can go into the logs and see that nothing is updating everything is working so this is looking good we can go here and check that we have first of all our docker compose file there that's fine and then in here we have inside the config we have the printers configuration file and if, if we go into services currently we don't have anything but it is working because it was able to create all of this so that's important we have confirmed that now we should be able to then go into the IP of our NAS and then on port 631 and then it's gonna tell us that we can sign in here and uh, we get to this page which is basically the user interface for the cups application and this is where we can manage the application so if we go into the admin option here then it prompts us for the credentials so we said it was going to be admin here and password here and now we can manage that instance of our avahi cups uh, airprint server so basically at this point if you have a printer in the network that does not support airprint you can add it here I believe I'm not sure I have not tried it yet because I don't have actually an old printer that is only like USB capable but you can probably add those too but it would have to be connected to the machine that is running this server so in that case you probably wouldn't be running this in a container unless you allow the container access to your USB devices just putting it out there figure it out if that's your case I honestly can't show you that sample but 
let's add my current printer which is a laser printer that is wireless and it is actually air print capable but i'm gonna add it anyway so that you can see how you do this so you go here into adding actually if, if it is network capable you can go into find new printers and then it's gonna scan your network for any printers and then in my case here's my printer so i can just go directly from here and add the printer and then i just rename it so in the case here of the application i'm gonna name it airprint mfp actually let's put airprint hp m277 dw and the description stays the same and then i'm gonna say this is my office printer and then this is the important thing remember that it said that you had to check this box share this printer and another important thing is if you see here in the connection it says socket and then the ip of the device in my local network if you don't enable the host network you're gonna see like the dns and weird stuff in here and it might probably not work right so if you see this then it's working fine now i can say continue and then it should start adding that printer to the configuration here so now it tells me okay we're gonna add this printer here this is all the details but i need to get the information about the make and stuff so i can figure out how to properly connect to the printer so in my case i go into hp continue and then i have to look for the specific type of printer that i have but in my case unfortunately it doesn't list that printer directly so i have to kind of go with a generic one here that basically covers that so it's this one hp color laser jet series pcl6 cups that's the one that works for my printer because it's not listed directly here so i'm gonna say okay i select this and then i'm gonna say add the printer so now this is that the drivers and raw cues are deprecated and will stop working in future versions but for now i don't have to worry about this uh it says that the printer was added successfully and then i can set some uh, printer options so i can basically go here and switch the size to us letter and i'm gonna say um the media source automatically select and then how do you want to output and the resolution and all that i'm gonna leave it at default set default that's fine and here's my printer that has been added into my airprint server so now i can see if i have any job spending nothing show all jobs nothing here so everything is looking good now i'm gonna go into my iphone so we, I can show you how this looks in the iPhone when you try to connect to this uh, using a uh, device that is capable of air printing. So I'll be back to show that. All right, so for this case, I have an image here of my Warcraft character. It's an image and I want to print this image allegedly. So I go into my iPhone and I select the option here to see what I do. And then I'm gonna say print. And then when I say print, I need to select the printer so i pick here and then you can see that the printer that i just added here is found in my network so now i can use this one to print the image as simple as that now i can just send the job there and then it'll get into the queue for my printer so let me just trigger this as a print and then once it starts processing and all that we should be able to come back into the application and then we'll see the job there in the user interface. So everything is working, the printer is accessible. I'm gonna cancel this, I don't need to print it. And you can see that it works and it, it connected successfully to the container and it sent the job and it was in the process of working with it. So it's pretty straightforward. That's gonna be it for this one. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Uh, leave your comments in the comment section below because as you can see I make all of these videos based on suggestions of things that you would like me to cover applications that you're curious about or tools that you think are beneficial for you so that's a very good way of uh, getting me to produce good quality content for you again you should have not uh, received an ad on my video I'm not monetizing the channel and that's on purpose uh, but that also means that I'm not making money from the videos that I post on YouTube. So I rely entirely on your support. So if you want to support me to continue creating content like this, feel free to use the link in the description below. Uh, there's a link to PayPal or you can also donate using Bitcoin if you want. There's a Bitcoin wallet there. And that's going to really help me to focus on the channel. And uh, we, as we grow, then we can get more 
uh, interesting things also in the channel. So thank you very much. I always shout out to the people that donate to the channel. So that's going to be it for this one. And I'll see you in the next one.